<laughs> Hi, everyone. Okay, it's five now, so we're going to start. Um, welcome, everyone, to another episode of Chi Talk. Um, today, we're joined by our content specialist, Shibei, and she'll be talking about the evolution of digital art. So um, we all know that way before the technology of blockchain and NFTs was invented, um, digital art was already a part of the contemporary art history for that case. So today, I think Shibei will um, kind of talk to us a little bit about how um, digital art has evolved and um, what it was like from maybe like 10, 20, 30 years ago and what it is going to be in the future. So like, let's welcome Shibei. Hi guys, I'm Shibei. Today we are going to talk about the evolution of digital art. Join us to today's topic. So as we all know, after the computer was invented, it was not a fresh thing for people to create in virtual world. So let's go back to the first graphic game created by computer. Let's see the photo. The game called Birdie and Brain, and that was one of the first games developed in the early history of video games. And we could see from the picture that was just a very simple graphic and symbol combination. And later in 1958, a game called Tennis for Two. Yes, we could also see the picture. The Tennis for Two was the first video game created simply for the entertainment. And it featured moving graphics on an oscilloscope. But we all know because of the lack of advanced technology at that time, we do not have enough room for the aesthetics. We didn't have the technology or computer science to create more colorful patterns or more, com or more complicated details. So the invention of painting software gave another breakthrough for the computer game. More possible, more possibility for the image and the pictures. In 1985, the first version of Microsoft Paint was invented. And we could see its interface. It's just a very basic program with elimination. And I think almost everyone would use this software when maybe they in their very young age. I remembered I used this software in my primary school. I maybe to draw some cards for greeting cards to celebrate Teacher's Day or something else because it cannot even compared by the today's Adobe Photoshop or Adobe Illustration or some digital drawing on iPad or iPhone. So the big breakthrough was coming, that was internet. In 1990s, the emerging of internet, people could get touch with larger world, more and more possibility come together at that time. And in 1990, the, the first version of Photoshop also released. A proof that we had another programs in digital art. All this progress and the internet invitation result in the blooming of many application or new website, such as MySpace that I show on the keynote and uh, something we call QZone in China. Those people use very fancy or colorful pattern or words to decorate their own house in their virtual world. It shows that at that time, people had strong passions to show themselves and want to have a bit of relationship with outside world. And, and at that time, some online small games start to become popular. 
such as this game called My Small Building. It's just a very easy game, such as you could paint your living room more to pink or red, or you can grab a desk into your bathroom or bedroom. And that is a game about painting your own paths or drawing some different color to an animal. But with the development of digital art, this online small game also has involved. This 2D theme starts to be 3D with more reality and details. And maybe we use today's very popular term such as Y2K, we could do describe those elements and we, could, we cannot deny that those elements became uh, an FT art today. Okay, then we come to the digital art. Actually, the digital art, this term emerged in very early time. And the definition of digital art has involved since this art form emerged. From 1960s to 70s, digital art consists mostly to algorithm T drawing in which the results of artist written code were drawn on paper by pen plotters and the computer generated films that also involved artists use of programming language. But at that time, the format is very single. The artist could only have the artworks or output by maybe film or video. And at that time, some novel artists such as Erosh Knight, Frank Gillette, Nanjing Park, and uh, Paul Ryan. So we come to talk about an art work called Wipe Circle by Erosh Knight and Frank Gillette in 1969. It was a video installation with one CCTV camera, six videotape recorders, nine television monitors, of which one is a receiver, one audio tape deck, and one automatic switcher. That was a seminal video installation that transposes present time demands as a way to disrupt television's one side flow of information that also expanded the relation of the audience to the artworks from the passive receptor to actual participate. So actually, in other words, those artists think the audience or the people who come to the exhibition also became a part of the exhibition or in, also in this artwork. And we must talk about Nanjing Park because he worked with a variety of media and is considered to be the founder of video art. But the interesting thing is, in the very beginning, Nanjing Park is not a video artist. In the beginning, he was devoting himself in music, especially in classic music. But because and then he became a member, member of the community flushes. That was a community that uh, combined lots of different areas, artists together. And then in 1963, he made his big debut called an exhibition known as Explosive of Music Electronic Television we could see the picture of that exhibition. That was the first time an artist to use TV to criticize the political environment in South Korea. And later he also had the solo show. He also had the solo show called TV Solo in 1971 and Another exhibition called Electronic Superhighway, Continental US, Alaska, Hawaii, 1995 to 97 or 296. He never discussed 
human technology and nature these three parts separately. He tried his best to explore the ways to communicate in all areas. And the second period is from the 1980s to the early 2000s. Digital art was understood as digital bone art, that is art created, stored, and distributed via digital technologies. In other words, the output could be, the format will be maybe a website or online game or anything else that create that created more possibilities for the video or digital artist. And with the internet exploded in 1994, net art came out. And the net art means art that uses the internet as its medium and that cannot be experienced in any other way. Now we can see the artworks by Olea Lea Lena and the work called My Boyfriend Came Back From The Wall. We can see it's just a totally uh, website and uh, she used coding to show some words and pictures on the website. And you can see it or open this website as long as you have internet or you have a computer. And another artist called Jean-Pierre Herbert. He was an American artist of French origin. He specialized in, in art drawing and coding mixed media. He said for each conceptual idea, he write coding, which his personal software interpret and transforms into a drawing a visual poem. So I think from that key point, the art, the scientists, and the technologists starting to make starting to mix in together, they are not totally different areas. At that time, around 2000, YouTube started to come to his stage. And I think YouTube supports some video artists to show their work because in the past, you can only see this video installation or this video in gallery, in an exhibition, in a show. But now you can very easily to get some video on the YouTube channel. And I think YouTube also became a social media now because you can comment to follow this YouTuber and you can exchange your ideas when he or she uploaded a video or a you know, daily record. This was the first video on YouTube that called me in the Zoom. That was a very short video, just 80 seconds. And uh, the man in the picture in the video just saying some hello or just to introduce he was in the Zoom. To most people, even some advocates of art, NFT is still a fairly new term. It gained its momentum in 2017 after the digital game CryptoKitty's success and came to public attention after the sales of Beeple's every day is the first 5,000 days at Christie's this spring. Since then, we have become familiar with the term NFTS. We see it on news every day. All the major auction house coming to release and promote the next record-breaking NFT sale and the rapid the emergency of new crypto art market marketplace like SuperReal, NFT Gateway, and OpenSea. Well, many people are speculating the NFT art. As a member of the art industry, the questions we should be asking are, 
What's NFT's place in the contemporary art world? How should we value an NFT world? And how do we define a good NFT work? One must realize, one must realize that an NFT is mainly a drive to artworks in different mediums. We must learn to separate and distinguish the two before we can evaluate the art itself. NFTs provide digital art with scarcity, transparency, and collectability. But digital art has been established by many artists before the invitation of crypto security, security and has been a part of the contemporary art history for decades. In that perspective, NFT art can be evaluated, criticized, and studied based on its aesthetics, narrative history, and the province, and so on. As digital art to some degree, of course, as NFT art grows, the change that it can potentially bring to art world will lead to diversities and the new conversation will be made. As time goes by, we will have to adopt a new way to look at NFT art as well. We can see every breakthrough in technology or in science will bring some change or new blood to art. I cannot ensure those in fact are 100% positive, but let's see, looking forward to the next transformation in art world. All right, um, thank you Subei so much for such an informative presentation. Um, yeah, like it's it's honestly a really surprising to think about if you think about it, how digital art, you know, has always um, have this element of um, kind of like interaction and like how it transformed from um, really simple digital games to, you know, like what we have right now. So um, I think uh, the possibilities are really limitless from now on. Um, so yeah, thank you again, Shade, for um, the, such an informative presentation.